Alrighty, here we are in the second or yeah, the second example that we're going to be doing for quadratics. So, um, I know I let you notice sometimes that I skip stuff. So, well, no, I didn't. This is example four, but we never did an example one, two, or three. And that's because um, this college algebra class is not the full version of college algebra. That would be the 1414 class. For us, we're just trying to hit all of the state standards. And so we're not necessarily teaching every single thing that's in every single section. Um, we're only the sections that have the information that you're required to learn by the state and then we even dive deeper into that um, and picking only the certain topics that you need to be concentrating on um, to be evaluated at the end of the semester over the state standards okay so that's why you see like a lot of times I'm skipping examples and things like that that's not because um, you're gonna have to learn how to do those on your own it's just because those are really not going to be in included in your homework packages or your reviews or your tests or anything like that so just ignore the fact that the numbers are a little off sometimes um, but we'll just take the examples as they are and sometimes I add in examples because I don't see anything in these packets that Pearson already creates that my math labs people already create I don't see anything in there that actually matches what's in the homework and so I add additional examples to match your homework so that you have pretty much an example of everything that you need, okay? Um, I know my examples aren't always exactly the same as the ones in the My Math Lab, but I am explaining how to find the same information that you need to do the examples in the My Math Lab. Okay, onward. Let's go on and do this problem. This is our first word problem when it comes to quadratic problems. So it says a ball is projected directly upward from an initial height of 75 feet with an initial velocity of 112 feet per second. And they give us the function here. So really we don't need to do this part because they're going to be giving you the functions. They're never going to ask you to find it, at least not yet anyway. Okay. So here we don't have to worry about that. That's been given to us. Now the next part says after how many seconds does the ball reach its maximum height? what is the maximum height so when they're talking about maximums and minimums that should automatically remind you that they're talking about the vertex so ultimately what they're asking me for is the vertex so how many seconds remember sec t is like your um, x value and h of t is the y value so they're asking me for this guy here and then the guy this guy here okay so if they want to know this x value and that y value, the first question says after how many seconds does the ball reach the maximum? So the first part's just asking me for the x. And I have a formula to find that x. It's um, negative b over 2a. And so if I look at my polynomial here, b is actually a positive 112 and a is a negative 16. And so let's see what we get there. We get positive 7 over 2 or 3.5 seconds. So that's answering the first question. The second question says, what is the maximum height? Well, the height would be the y value. And how do we find the y value? We take this x, we plug it into the function, and that'll give us the y value. So I'm going to use my calculator to do that. Negative 16 times 3.5 squared plus 112 times 3.5 plus 75. And I get 271. And let's see, it does say that the height is in feet. So then this is going to be 271 feet. Now here it says, for what interval of time is the height of the ball greater than 200 feet? Okay. So I already know that, that it's going to be opening downward because that's negative, right? The 16 is negative. 
So I know it's going to open downward. And if this is um, 3.5 seconds, and let's say this is 271 feet, there's my vertex, and I know it's opening downward. Now I don't know whether it's going to touch the x-axis here or here um, or where, but I'm just going to draw a parabola as best as I can. And these points might not be accurate, but that's okay. That's not um, what I'm looking for, okay? What I want to look for is it says, for what interval of time is the height of the ball greater than 200 feet? So here's 200 feet. I basically want to know what is this x value and what is this x value, okay? And how do I figure that out? I'm going to set the height equal to 200. And this quadratic equation cannot be solved until it's equal to zero. So I'm going to minus 200 on both sides. Oops, that would be a negative. And then I'm going to solve using the quadratic formula. Now the variable here is t, so I'm going to put t equals instead of x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And so what do we get here? We get negative 1, 1, 2 plus or minus the square root of this huge number over negative 32. And, oh, that doesn't come out right, so let's see, 4544. Four, four. Oh, it's not going to simplify it for me. So I'm going to have to do this one the old school way. Let's see over here. I'm going to use this space here. So I have 4544. Four, four. Um, 4 might go into that, and it does. So 4 times 1136. One, now I want to cheat as much as I can. So save me some time. So it's still giving decimals, which means that number is still too big. Um, let's see if 4 will go into that. It does. So I get 2 times 284. I'm sorry, 4 times 284. Let me see if it will do 284. Yes, it does. Okay. So we have the square root of 454. 4. four which equals the square root of 4 times 4 times 284. This guy, this guy, and this guy. All the ends of the tree. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 284 is apparently 2 square root of 71. So if I multiply all the stuff on the outside, I actually get 8 square root of 71. So hopefully the numbers are not so big, but if they are, you do have a way to still find that square root. Unless they just ask you for the decimals, then you don't even need to do that. You could just use the decimal. So I get negative 112 plus or minus 8 square root of 71 over negative 32. And so depending on the computer, I don't know what version it's going to want. It's either going to want negative 112. Well, I guess you're going to have to find the um, decimals because I don't know which one of these is on the left and which one is on the right. And when you're writing your interval, you have to know which one goes on the left of the interval and which one goes on the right of the interval. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go in here and see if this can be simplified. So a big giant fraction, negative one, one, two, plus eight square root of 71 over negative 32. It's probably going to ask you for decimals because it's not letting me simplify it at all. So this is one point, about 1.39. It'll tell you how many decimals to round. So I didn't even need to do all of that. I could just put this in the calculator and when it, get, it would have given me 1.39. And if I type this in the calculator with the minus sign, it should give me the other value. So fraction. I 
I get 5.61. So when it's asking me for the interval, I know this now is 1.39 and this is 5.61. So I know that the interval should be 1.39 comma 5.61. And it's asking me for the interval of time. Um, this one I'm unsure about because it's not increasing or decreasing. It's just a regular interval. So there is a point here and there is a point there. It may actually be a bracket here. It only has to be parentheses if they're talking about intervals of increasing, decreasing, or constant. No, it does have to be parentheses because it says strictly greater than... Uh, greater than 200 not greater than or equal to which would have the bracket just greater so it actually should have the parentheses not the brackets if it had said greater than or equal to then we would have had the brackets and then that's it now, if they don't want that, you could always type in this number here and that number here, um, but I'm pretty sure they're going to ask you for a decimal for a problem that doesn't come out to be a nice little number. Now, this last problem says, after how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? Well, the ball hits the ground when the, when the height is zero, right? That's when it's gotten all the way to the bottom. So now I'm going to be plugging in zero here. So um, again, I'm going to use my quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Let's see, 112 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times 75 is going to be this huge number over negative 32. Let me see if we could take the square root of that big number. It's going to be a decimal. So let's just go ahead. Again, this one they're going to ask you to round it. So let's do the plus and then the minus. So you can see my calculator. So fraction, I'm going to do negative 112 plus the square root of 17344 over negative 32. And the decimal we get is negative 0 0.62. And then now let's do it again, but with the minus. And we get 7.62. Now, this one does not make sense. Time is negative 0.62 seconds. So that is going to be over here, but it doesn't make sense. We're not going to include any of the parabola over here because when you throw a ball, it starts with time zero before you threw the ball. I'm sure the ball was on the floor, you picked it up, right? And then you threw it, but that's not um, the important part here. So this one is actually doesn't make any sense for us. We can't have time equal to negative 0.62 seconds. Um, but this one does make sense. So over here, after 7.62 seconds of throwing the ball, then it eventually hits the ground again. So that one is the one that makes sense. Okay, that one took quite a while. So before I go into the next um, couple of word problems, I actually have three more word problems. Um, we're going to get into another another video. So let me stop this one.